Hey, this video is just to connect two topics, literally in this sense, because we've looked at the CPU, which is represented here, and we've looked at main memory, and we've said that main memory is any type of memory, although in reality it's going to be either RAM or ROM, but it's directly accessible by the CPU. So this means we're connected to it, and we don't have to go through other input-output channels like a, a secondary storage device would, and they're directly connected through buses, and a bus in a computer bus is a collection of wires through which data is transmitted. How fast the bus is, how often data gets transferred through it, is measured in megahertz and it's based off the clock that it's using to regulate the transfers. And a more important measurement is the size of a bus, also known as its width. And this is how many bits it can transfer at a time. So I've said a collection of wires here that makes up a single bus. So I've, I've, these are meant to be three distinct buses here, which we'll look at in a second. But you can see I've got three lines composing each bus, and they're called lines in real life, so it's not just a, a, because I've drawn them as lines, but each line will be able to transfer over a zero or one at a time. So this, each bus here has got a size, it's got a width of three. But if you have a 64-bit computer, that means you, basically the computer is dealing in 64 bits at a time. So for a, the CPU is designed to deal with blocks of data in 64 bits. If you have a 32-bit computer, it's the same idea, just a 32 bits. And this means that the width of at least two of these buses has to be 64 bit in order to be able to accommodate all that data at a time. So we'll have 64 distinct lines. So let's just look at what each of these buses is representing now. So it's worth just saying that buses can be either unidirectional or bidirectional. Unidirectional means that data can move in just one direction, so from the CPU to RAM or vice versa. Bidirectional is where it can move either way, so it's like a two way highway. So there are three types of buses, I say. The address bus is the first, and this sends a memory address along the bus from the CPU to memory. So that tells you that it's unidirectional, it only moves, data only moves along this bus from the CPU to the RAM. And the purpose of this is that in order to read or write data, or fetch and write data, the CPU needs to tell the RAM where the data is located or where it's going to be located. So it will put some data on the address bus, it will put an address on the address bus to tell it to access a bit of data there or to store a bit of data here. The RAM needs to know where the CPU wants to read or write data from. And so in a 64-bit computer where addresses are 64 bits long, the address bus has to be 64 bits wide. And it's only unidirectional because the RAM doesn't need to communicate addresses to the CPU and if it does it will use the data bus. So the data bus is where the actual data is sent to and from, so this is bidirectional, it can move either way. So you'll supply an address to the RAM if you want to fetch some data and then it will put the data along the data bus in order to go to the CPU. So that's a process, it's separated to ease congestion essentially. So both buses will be used a couple of times at least in the fetch execute cycle. The third bus is really important but is slightly harder to understand perhaps. And this is the control bus. So this carries commands from the CPU and status messages back from other hardware devices. So I should say that these buses do also go to other bits of hardware but they're not as relevant for our kind of GCC computer science. But the control bus is bi is bidirectional, it goes to and from RAM and other components as well. So the CPU in some cases needs to specify commands to other devices and it can do this via the control bus and vice versa actually. Devices might need to interrupt the CPU in order to do something uh, very quickly, in order to prevent a crash for example. So the so I should say that the data bus, again, has got to be 64 bits if you've got a 64-bit computer. If you've got a 16-bit computer, it's got to be 16 bits long. The control bus isn't really connected to that. It can be, it's usually a lot sm smaller in terms of its width. So this is just a 4-bit example. I've used ones with 8 bits before, so it's a lot smaller than the address and data bus, potentially. This table is meant to just represent an example 4-bit control bus and what each line, each wire can send, what signal can be sent along it. So the clock signal is sent along the control bus to the CPU, we've talked about how important the, uh, the clock is in regulating the CPU and the clock will be specified so it will fluctuate between 0 and 1 in order to regulate the CPU. Also there will be read and write lines in order to tell the CPU or tell a device what's actually happening, what the current state of it is, whether it's reading or writing to a device. Usually 0 means it's doing it, so it's it reading in this case and not writing in this case, but it doesn't really matter. And also an interrupt, you don't need to know what it is particularly, but it's just a way of stopping what the CPU is doing and executing something else instead because it's really important that it does it. And this is how hardware will communicate to a CPU that it needs to interrupt what it's currently doing. So control bus is a little different because each line is representing a very distinct thing, whereas in the other two, each line is just part of the overall address or overall bit of data that's being sent. 
So that's it, a relatively simple topic. Make sure you know which direction each bus operates in and um, that the clock signal is sent via the control bus.